In today's video, we're going to talk about how one of the biggest artists in 2020 is now failing to sell tickets for $35. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two, three weeks, put a cell phone like up. Lady, if your pussy smell like water, put a cell phone like the up. Fellas, lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking nigga dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone like Let's be up. real about this shit. Yeah, keep it fucking real. Some of y'all niggas suspect as a motherfucker. Let's be real. The day after this, he would go out to put out multiple statements on it, such as, what I do at a live show is for the audience at the live show. It'll never translate correctly to someone looking at a little five, six second clip from their goddamn crib on their phone. It just don't work like that. Because regardless of what you motherfuckers are talking about and how the internet twisted up my motherfucking words, me and all my fans at the show, the gay ones and the straight ones, we turn the fuck up. My boy had the crop top in the front row. He out there in that jungle, in that water. He out there. He's standing on the rail, goddamn cutting up. He knows the words to the song. I'm rapping them bitches with him. All the lights went up. Gay or straight, you wanna know why? Because even my gay fans don't got fing AIDS. They don't got AIDS. My gay fans, they take care of themselves. They ain't going for that. They ain't no nasty gay. They ain't no junkies on the street. I said, if you ain't sucking in the parking lot, put your cell phone light up. You know what my gay fans did? Put that mother light up. My gay fans, they ain't going for that. They got class. They ain't sucking no dick in the parking lot. You gotta get a room, a good one. Five star hotel. Even my gay fans have standards. Now this situation would somehow lead to him getting removed from multiple festivals such as Lollapalooza, having multiple of his features on upcoming projects get scrapped, and get multiple of his songs removed from both the radio and certain playlists. This would damage his stream significantly in the days following, but he decided that he wasn't going to apologize right away. He decided it was a good idea that instead of apologizing, he would release a music video and his single giving what it's supposed to give. As a video would feature him holding up a sign that said AIDS at one point with some bars about AIDS. At the end of it, he had a really heartwarming piece where he would say, don't fight hate with hate. My apologies for being me the same way you want the freedom to be you. I think it's really great that he decided to try to pull like a Uno reverse card gotcha that they're not letting him be him when like the him he was trying to be or whatever was literally homophobic and blatantly homophobic. But he also earlier in the quotes that I was talking about tried to justify it by being like, no, I had gay fans that were cool with me. I'm not like anti-gay. Now who would have guessed it? This whole music video and him not apologizing only increased the hate mob that he had going for him. And he put out an apology, but I think it's more likely that the management really pulled his arm until he had to. Of course, the apology would be nearly as heartwarming as everything else he put out, stating, Anybody who done ever been affected by AIDS or HIV, y'all got the right to be upset. What I said was insensitive, though I have no intentions of offending anybody. So my apologies with the prayer hands, but the LGBTQ community... I ain't tripping on y'all. Do you. Y'all do y'all business. Now, of course, it was lovely to see this apology, but it wouldn't be lovely to see it a few days later because he would delete the apology. Now, just so you guys know, there is like a lot more of him just burning bridges throughout the situation. He would come at labels and some organizations who wanted to distance themselves from him, some of the festivals, everything like that. And he would try to call them out for being like, wow, you guys expect the black man to be perfect. That's obviously ridiculous. And try to pull like kind of a racist card on them. But I feel like he had done too much damage for people to view it that way. So instead of really causing any problems with them, it would just make him look even worse and cut more ties with some of the most powerful people in the industry. I think despite everything I just said being a massive piece of why the baby isn't nearly as popular today as he once was, I do not think it is at all the exclusive piece. I think the way he just straight out destroyed his female fan base he had going for him is also a major factor. Now it's worth mentioning, for his rapping, he had a really good male audience with that, but there were a bunch of females crushing on him. He would be trending every once in a while for people talking about how attractive they think he is and how like the way he carries himself and his demeanor is so cool that it was attractive to a lot of people. And everything he would do in 2021 and a few years prior and a few years after would completely destroy his female fan base. There was a rumor going around that DaBaby had actually cheated on his baby mama and there were more and more rumors every day making it seem more and more likely that he had actually done it. 
Now, to combat this, he did the right thing, and he decided he would put out a snippet where he seems to have hated on dark-skinned women. What a great move. Of course, there was also the incident where he slapped a female fan for having her phone a little bit too close to him, and he threw himself in the entire situation with Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez, continuing to work with Tory Lanez, kind of fighting with Megan Thee Stallion on Twitter, and then bringing Tory on stage at a festival where Megan Thee Stallion was, which would end up getting Tory Lanez put in some trouble because he's not allowed to be there. Why would the baby even bother doing this? And after all this, he topped it all off with him being way too aggressive trying to get a kiss from a fan that would not only get his female fan turned off from him, but multiple of the male fans completely clowning him. The other thing is that DaBaby had an absolutely terrible character where he made himself unmarketable and unlikable at some point. He was constantly having either character issues or legal issues, which eventually it comes down to the label and the organizations having to make a decision on what they want to do with him. He's someone who became completely unmarketable because it wasn't a matter of if he would do something wrong, it was how long could they wait for him to do something wrong again and how bad would it actually be. Was it going to be him attacking his label mates again? Was it going to be him attacking some random guy who was booking him for a show? Was it going to be him getting in legal problems for who knows again? There was just, it, there was no doubt at any point with whether or not DaBaby was going to get in trouble. And if you're a brand, you don't want to surround yourself with people who are getting in trouble. This would even lead to other artists not wanting to go anywhere near to baby because he might just say something again and he was largely blackballed from the industry because of all this over time it wasn't that he did a six nine and he snitched it wasn't that he did something wrong that like wasn't indicative of who he was as a person the problem with the baby was literally the baby i think a reason he was able to survive to the point where this is what got him canceled was because a lot of the things you could try to give him the benefit of the doubt but the thing at the concert it really just showed who he is as a person and that he's not a good person rather than that these people effed him over and he was just getting back okay now this leads us to where we are today his monthly Spotify listeners has dropped to over half of what I think the peak was. He's lost all of his leverage in the industry. He's mentioned before that he wanted to focus on his label, which he's probably doing now. But the only problem is, yet again, nobody in the industry wants to do you any favors. I think normally if you're a label, you need to have some connections and need to have some type of pull. And if you're anybody, you probably don't want to do the baby absolutely any favors. Now, on top of that, there was a rumor, or yeah, I think it's a report, it's confirmed now at this point, from Rolling Loud about how the baby had a 14,000 seat venue booked, but he couldn't sell more than 500 tickets, and they even would reduce the price to $35, and people still were not buying tickets to see the baby. Now, I think this happened in New Orleans, if I'm correct. I'm going to have the report on the screen for you, but... If you can't sell 500 tickets at $35 after being one of the largest artists in the world just two years ago, it's pretty much a done for you. I would find it very unlikely for DaBaby to have a comeback without some completely unprecedented change of pace and really him saving himself as a character in a way that I couldn't imagine even being possible at this point. Now, at the end of the day, I don't think you can blame DaBaby because who would have thought it was a bad idea to cut off some of the strongest people in the industry while you're having your fans saying that your music is extremely repetitive. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.